During the season of Easter, the first reading in the liturgy is always from the Acts of the Apostles. Normally it's from the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament. But during this time of Easter, these 50 days, the Church wants us to know what did the resurrection of Jesus do to the earliest believers? And I think the Church senses that if we get a sense of that, then we recognize that the exact same thing is happening in you and me right here today. If you have not opened your Bible for a while, if you just read your Bible today, sometime this week I encourage you to read the Acts of the Apostles. It's kind of exciting reading. There's strange figures there and wonderful characters and there's miracles and there's stories of great joy and also stories of disappointment and even martyrdom and people being imprisoned because of their faith. So look at the Acts of the Apostles. If you read that, the main figure in the Acts of the Apostles, other than the risen Lord and the Spirit which is given to us, is the Apostle Paul. In fact, after Jesus, Paul is probably the most important person in our faith as he preached and went out and told people and showed people what the risen Lord means. The insight of St. Paul, if you read his letters, in fact, he mentions it 83 times in his letters, The goal of the Christian life, the goal of someone who follows our Lord Jesus, is to live in Christ. To live in Christ. That's not just symbolic talk. It's not just a metaphor. He really means it. Somehow, someway, because of what God has done in Jesus Christ, Christ can live in you and you can live in him. And when you live in Christ, everything is different. There are some who say that Christians like Christ, but only in an advisory capacity. We keep him over here, and then when we need him, I go to him, and then I go back and do what I want. Some people also say, Christ is my co-pilot, and I say, if he's your co-pilot, you're in the wrong seat. He should be the pilot. We are the co-pilot. So what does it mean to live in Christ? In the Gospel today, Jesus says, if you love me, my Father and I will come to you and we will make our dwelling in you. And then we will send you the Holy Spirit to give you whatever you need. So Jesus says very clearly his goal is to make a dwelling place in you. That way you belong to him and he belongs to you. When I read St. Paul's letters and when he talks about how to live in Christ, how do you do that? Just three simple ideas tonight. First of all, St. Paul says, To live in Christ means that you are an organism, not an organization. You are the church. You are a body. You are not a club. We are not a collection of like-minded individuals. We literally become part of a body, which is the body of Christ. The church is Jesus living in the people of God right here. And St. Paul loves that image of the body. And he says again and again, if part of the body hurts, the entire body hurts. So what does it mean to live in Christ? Be attentive to your hurting brothers and sisters. Some of them might be halfway around the world in Yemen. We don't even know them personally, but they're part of our body. Some of them might be a person sitting in the pew very near to you who may be hurting. If they're hurting, we all hurt. The church is an organism. It is a body. It is not an organization that I belong to. That means that it defines who I am. My life is different now because I'm part of his body. The second thing that helps me understand how to live in Christ, St. Paul says that through the sacraments, especially baptism and Eucharist, the life of Christ grows in you and you grow in him. That's why St. Paul says, don't you know, you who have been baptized, that it is no longer you who live, but now Christ who lives in you. Isn't that beautiful? No longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. By your baptism, you have become a member of his body. He claims you. You are grafted onto his life. It's not your life anymore, it's his. That's great news. By your baptism, now his life is in you. And then we celebrate what we do here tonight, every week, when we receive Holy Eucharist, I don't know a more intimate altar call than that. People have an altar call and say, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, come down here in front. St. Paul never, in fact, it's nowhere in the Bible 
accepting Jesus as your personal Savior. St. Paul talks about how we all together accept our Lord Jesus because we all together need him and we need each other to be able to know him. So when you come to receive Holy Communion, you're not just getting a thing. He is coming into you to allow you to come into him. And he doesn't force himself into you. He very patiently lets himself be broken open and poured out. Again, look at the cross. That's where it began. That happens right here on this altar in a few minutes. And why is he broken open and poured out? Because he wants to be given to you and be poured into you. Divine life in you. So when you receive Holy Communion tonight, you become the primary tabernacle of the Catholic Church. Think about the great respect we offer to our tabernacle in our Eucharistic chapel. When you walk there, you genuflect. That's the presence of Jesus. After Mass tonight, we ought to be treating each other in the exact same way. There's a story of a mother who was teaching her child about what it means to receive Jesus. And she came up at communion time, and the little boy stayed back in the pew. And when she came back, he was standing there waiting for her. And he looked at her and he said, Is he in you? And the mother said, Yes. And the boy prostrated himself on the ground because he knew that Jesus was in his mother. That's what happens to you and me. He's in you. We ought to be different. And then lastly, St. Paul says that the Holy Spirit will come. And in fact, we hear that in the Gospel, and we're getting ready to celebrate Pentecost in two weeks. The Holy Spirit will come into you and will equip you with whatever you need. You will be equipped to live in Christ. That means any danger that comes your way, you have the equipment, you have the strength or the life in you to face it. Any joy and success that you have, that's because the Holy Spirit gave that to you, all glory to God, not to you. So we prepare to receive that spirit. Tonight we get to live in Christ. What will that mean for your life? Would anything be different in you if you let that happen?